I've always been, I've always been uh, comfortable with the very fact that, that, you know, that I'm different. You know, I'm different, I'm a different person. And it's, in those days, let me tell you, it took a lot to be homosexual. Because you don't know what the cops are gonna do. You don't know that people on the street will, you know, beat you up or something like this. And I was, I'm not exactly the most masculine person in the world. Growing up, uh, I knew that there was something different about me, but I really didn't know what it was. I was a late bloomer as far as uh, being sexually active. In fact, I thought growing up that I was the only person who was like that. I absolutely thought there was nobody else in the world like me. I thought I was the only gay person <laughs> in the world. I was ready to live a life as the, the, one, the one person. I went to the dictionary and said, what is, and I looked up homosexuality and, and it said it's a phase that one passes through. I called my mother and I said, uh, can I come to dinner Tuesday night? I have something I want to talk to you about. And she said, what? And I said, I'll tell you Tuesday. Oh my God, you have some girl in trouble? I said, some I said no mom, no girls involved. My mother sat me down one time and says, whatever you do while you're out there running around, don't you ever come home and tell me what you did. So that shut everything off. No communication. No, nothing, nothing about my life. That there was never any question. I could uh, have boyfriends and things like that, but it was never questioned, never talked about. So my mother got the letter from Lucky that I was supposed to get, and she was crying and very upset and telling me I don't want my daughter to be a lesbian, and she didn't use that word, but so and then my father got a hold of me and he started talking to me and he said, do you want to go see a, a therapist, a shrink, you know, whatever you want? And I said, no, 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 I am who I am and I'm fine, don't worry about it. And he said, well, you're my daughter and no matter who you are or how you are, I'll always love you. I wrote her a note saying that this is a subject we've never talked about, but I wanted you to know that I'm a lesbian and Barbara and I have a very good relationship and we wanted you to be aware of this. Then she called back shortly and just said, we love you. And I was glad I had done that. I didn't come out to my parents, my mother especially, because I thought she would blame herself. She was very hostile to the idea of being gay. She That's was not for me. So absolutely not me. And I didn't have that attitude because, because I'm gay, and I felt that's all. I have no choice. That I am gay. When I told her how I felt, and she told me she felt something too, but she was afraid of the idea of being gay. I try to talk her into it, telling her about the ancient Greeks, but uh, for whatever good that did. <laughs> and I couldn't even use the word gay because it sounded so frivolous. So I said, I'm homosexual. And my father said, what? And I repeated it, and he looked at my mother immediately and said, must be your side of the family. All the men on my side of the family were men. And my mother immediately snapped back and she said, oh, really? What about your cousin Sidney? Well, to make a long story short, he had his way with me, and it was the first orgasm I had, and I fainted. The next thing I knew, I was coming to, and he was putting cold compresses on my face. But that was my coming, that was my coming out. I mean, uh, I was coming out to myself, actually, because through all, all my life, until I was 19, I never thought about saying to somebody, I'm gay. If she didn't know, she could deny it. But she knew she could have defended me. But back in those days, it was common knowledge that uh, you, you could be arrested for being gay. I was very secretive. I was very secretive. I found out later I was living in a closet. Um, it was in New York. At that time, it was illegal to be gay. It was considered a mental disease to be gay. 
you had no civil rights, you had no real, real legal rights. Nothing was uh, anything but that you were a criminal in those earlier days. So the police would come to people's homes, they'd send the state police and drag them out and take them off to jail and so on. I remember specifically not wanting to be seen with anybody who was, I hate even to use that term anymore to put it in that sense, but who was a little bit more effeminate or, um, you know, I hate that term straight appearing, but that's what I was looking for. Somebody you couldn't tell. The fear was that somebody would know who I was. It didn't occur to me that if I'm out with 14 straight people, they'll think I'm straight. But if I'm with one gay person, they'll think I'm gay. Of course, they would know. I was like this. We couldn't do anything. You couldn't dance in a bar. You couldn't be in a bar. You couldn't touch anybody. God, you had to be closeted. I remember with the first woman I ever was with, I was 21 years old, going to a grocery store. And a guy came up to me and he said, I know what you need, baby. I mean, like, just sickening, just sickening. I had to live two lives for so much of my life. I was Mr. Malone during the week, and I was Jimmy on the weekend. I, I can't come out and uh, flaunt anything. At the, well, I, my, my personality doesn't allow it because I'm so trained to be uh, two people. I don't have to live two lives now, but I don't know how to live any other way. No. It's almost impossible to describe what Stonewall meant, what happened. It was electrifying. It totally shattered everything around one. It was a new way of life. And I remember within the first week or so, uh, the energizing of everything, the coming alive was amazing. And I felt myself and I said, I'm free. I'm really free for the first time in my life. I walked into another bar called My Way on Washington Boulevard in Culver City. I had been away from gay life for like 10 years. And who was in there but Aldo? Snow White hair, gorgeous. We were together for eight years. And I walked away for a year. And she came to me at the end of that year and she said, I'm dying, I have cancer. So I stayed with her for three months through her transition. She died in 91 from cancer. And yeah, I was a star, irreplaceable. I learned from John that there is so, so much in life, so much, uh, vi he was so vibrant that it made my life vibrant. I could turn to him and say, I'm hurting and he could give me the, uh, the strength, the care, whatever you want to call it, but always somehow uh, a sense of, yes, keep going on with life, and he, he was that kind of a person. He understood my sense of humor, and I got his. And it could be one or two words, and we would crack up laughing, and I can't imagine a relationship without a lot of laughter. I mean, even in the middle of sex, we could stop and laugh and then go back to it. And, you know, that's great. <laughs> we both had goals that were similar. What I've seen people break up a lot is because one goes in one direction, the other goes in another direction, and, and that's how they get apart. But our goals were similar. We both wanted to travel the world. We didn't care to make a career or a profession. And we said, we're just gonna see the world. I once remember when we first uh, started to be together, I said, the only thing I wanna see is that I, I, you know, happiness, that you have happiness. That's all I care about. So I don't know what, what else love is. <laughs> 